today, ladies and gentlemen, we're in a 2003 Ford Lightning. This is one of the most requested things on the channel, and it is a performance truck by Ford, and it was kind of overshadowed at the time it came out. It did not sell very well, but it was one of those hidden gems where it looked like a normal F-150 for the most part, and then you saw the logo and you're like, Lightning. I'm sure that's just some stupid name they gave some little upgrade spec F-150. But no, it's a completely different animal. And along with that, it also has a nine and a half inch rear end on the car with 373s and also a 5.4 liter supercharged V8 with an Eaton supercharger on it. So, it definitely meant some business. Now there's a common misconception that this engine is the exact engine that was in, say, the Ford GT. But it wasn't. It was pretty similar. This was a single overhead cam. That was a dual overhead cam. A little bit different supercharger setup. But overall, it was a 5.4 liter V8. Pretty similar to this one. The first thing you notice when you get in the Lightning is the space. Because you have this very intense 5.4 up front. But then you get in here and it's so roomy. You got pretty much a bench seat here. but. You have these two bucket seats, and then you could put somebody in the middle, but for the most part, it feels just like this nice, comfortable two-seater truck. You have all this, I don't even know what to do with all this space, it's weird. Because you have the steering wheel from a 99 to 04 Mustang, but then you're in this big truck. So you have all this, I don't know what to do with my hands. Like there's so much space I can't even express. This does have long tube headers on it as well. So that's what's even more surprising. You'd think it'd just be screaming in your ear the entire time, but it's, it's not. It's just a nice, lovely, lovely truck. This belongs to my buddy Dan and his father. He is from Pennsylvania. You might remember Stello the Turbo Turd, that and also the Fox Buddy I reviewed. And he drove all the way from outside of Philly to let me drive this thing. So it couldn't have been that bad, right? The only downside about that is, is an obvious one. And that is the gas mileage. When you're going around town especially, it is horrendous. It is so terrible. Cruising on the highway, it's still bad, but not as bad. But that's mostly because it has a 24 gallon tank. So... You're good. <laughs> From the factory, Ford Lightning made 390 horsepower. But this one had a few things done to it. And what's funny is it has a boost gauge in the dash, right? And it says it can go up to 10 pounds of boost. However, forgive me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure the Ford Lightning stock boost level was seven PSI, but this one goes to 10. So Dan and his dad don't really know if it's been ported or not. So it's probably making probably 400 something wheel horsepower and you can feel every bit of it. It's just really odd when you're accelerating fairly quickly in something this big. Like I've, you know, I've done that diesel truck. I did that huge monster truck and they were slow, they weren't that fast. But you get in this and you get on it and you're like, it sounds pretty much like a Terminator that's stock. And you start kind of yawing a little bit like this through the road because it's just so big. Another notorious thing about the Lightning is they're known as burnout queens because they have all that torque and there's no weight on that rear end at all. Because it's a pretty small truck, it's still a truck. So there's still that mass to it. But at the same time, for being a truck, it's pretty small. Believe it or not, from the factory, the tire that was on this car are Goodyear Eagle F1s. So not really a drag racing tire or anything like that, more of a handling tire. So you put this tire on an SVT truck and it's pretty responsive. I mean, you're gonna get the floatiness from the early 2000s and that kind of feeling where the steering isn't directly responsive and you have all that weight you're throwing around. It's just the way it is. <laughs> oh man. When you hit the brakes, guys, the whole thing just kind of nose dives. You're like, oh no! <laughs> Another elephant in the room, I have to say, yes, 
It is the truck that Brian O'Connor drives in the first Fast and Furious. And that's how it got a lot more publicity. Because at first people thought, like I said, it was just a normal truck and it was way too expensive for being a normal truck and people didn't do their research and they're like, oh, this is another F-150. But then it was in that movie and they're like, why would he drive that truck to his shop, Racer's Edge? Like, why does it matter? He's, he's just driving this boring red F-150. What's the deal? Then years later, everybody watches it again and goes, oh dude, that's so cool. He dailies a lightning to work. Speaking of the Fast and Furious era, how about them taillights though? I just realized those aren't aftermarket. Those were factory in 2003. Those were factory. What were you doing? <laughs> Another cool thing about the truck is it has a really interesting side exhaust system on it. So you'll be cruising down the road, there'll be somebody eyeing you and you'll be like, feel my murka as I pass you and you just floor it. Oh my God. <laughs> there is so much play in the steering wheel I'm not used to. <laughs> It's like, it's hard to describe guys because you have this loud V8 and everything, but it's very calm, you know, when you're not on it. Because you're just like going for a leisurely drive on a back road, big performance thing. There we go. It's a big performance thing that I'm not used to, but it adds a little bit of flair to it because I have all this space. <laughs> Instant response is really good though. <laughs> it's weird because the Lightning was never designed to have a manual transmission. And you can tell when you're in the cabin. If you had a stick right here, it would would have been completely out of place. The only thing though is when you're like halfway in the gas, the gearbox is kind of iffy on what it wants to do. If you just nail it, oh it knows exactly what to do. But when you're trying to kind of ease through corners and whatnot, it's like, ah, oh, maybe this gear, uh, no, let's just throw you into this one. So, like, twin screw and, like, root superchargers, whatever you want to call them, they're a little bit different, but you get what I'm saying. They have so much personality behind them, but at the same time, you can see why most people prefer turbos, because they're not so in your face all the time. But certain cars like this and the Terminator and all them, they fit their character. So, having that go is really fun. I will say though, when you're on it, your driver confidence on a scale of one to 10 is probably like negative one. It's definitely of its time, but at the same at the same time, it's a giggle machine. It is so much fun. Like, of course it has that, that little feeling of being super sketch when you're on it, but that adds to it, if you know what I'm saying. At the end of the day, it's still a truck. So you have all this performance, in a truck. So you got the best of both worlds when you got a truck and everything else and you have a giggle machine. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a great time driving this Ford Lightning. It was a really different, interesting experience just from the environment you're in to what the sound is coming from up front. So it was a lot of fun. I want to thank Dan so much for driving all the way down here to let me drive it. And what do you guys think of the Ford Lightning? I really want to see what you guys say. And I will see you guys next time. Take it easy. Have a fantastic day.